Is The Legend of Zelda the best game on the NES? With its gleaming gold cartridge, massive non-linear world, and incredible chiptune soundtrack, it certainly makes a strong case for why it deserves the top slot. So how did Nintendo create this groundbreaking first entry in the series beloved by so many? Developed from 1984 until 1986, Zelda pushed the boundaries of what was possible in video games. The project was led by two of Nintendo's greatest minds. Takashi Tezuka, the visionary who has been involved in almost every Mario and Zelda game Nintendo has ever created, and Shigeru Miyamoto, the legendary designer that had already experienced great success with games like Donkey Kong, Punch-Out, and Excite Bike. Together, Tezuka and Miyamoto developed The Legend of Zelda and Super Mario Brothers simultaneously. They had tons of great ideas and felt that some of them belonged in the fast-paced action-oriented world of Super Mario Brothers, while others were more suited to the strategic puzzle-solving land of Zelda. A decade later, when Miyamoto and Tezuka were developing games for the Nintendo 64, they decided to do the same thing again. Mario 64 and Zelda The Ocarnia of Time were also developed simultaneously, with the team moving some elements from one game to the other. Nintendo had a lot riding on the success of The Legend of Zelda. In Japan, they had created a new peripheral called the Famicom Disk System, and Zelda was one of its launch titles. The disk system connected to the Japanese version of the NES through the cartridge slot and allowed players to play games released on floppy disks, which not only cost half the price of cartridges, but while a cartridge could only hold 32 kilobytes of data, a disk could hold a whopping 128. By modern standards, 128 kilobytes is nothing. I've sent bigger emails without attachments than that. But in 1984, this was four times as much memory as they had previously. Players could also save their games on the discs instead of needing to write down lengthy passwords. Like many other console add-ons, the Famicom Disk System quickly became obsolete, and it was never released in North America or Europe. The system was easy to break, and not only were the discs fragile, they were super easy to copy, so pirated games were everywhere. Even worse, Nintendo developed a new chip, the MMC-1, which allowed cartridges to hold more memory. Despite all of that, the Famicom Disk System was still fairly successful, selling 4.4 million units. Nintendo even continued servicing disk systems all the way up until 2007. The disk still did have one advantage, the ability to save your game. Brilliantly, Nintendo solved this issue by putting a button battery inside the cartridge to power the small amount of memory required to save your progress. When the North American version of Zelda was released in July of 1987, it was the first console game to include this technology. With the larger format that the disk system offered, Miyamoto wanted to create a larger game. He was inspired by Adventure for the Atari, but also by his personal experiences. As a boy growing up in Kyoto, Japan, he was often allowed to explore the countryside near his home. He was quoted as saying, I went hiking and found a lake. It was quite a surprise for me to stumble upon it. When I traveled around the country without a map, trying to find my way, stumbling on amazing things as I went, I realized how it felt to go on an adventure like this. It's that feeling that makes Zelda a truly amazing experience. The game is large, but it's dense with things to find. The overworld is made up of 128 unique screens, and almost all of them house a secret to discover. I think we all know that Link is the hero's name, and Zelda is the princess he needs to save. The name Link was meant as a play on words, as he links the player to the game. Zelda, on the other hand, 
is named after novelist F. Scott Fitzgerald's wife. True story. To win, Link must search the overworld for eight dungeons which hold the eight shards of the Triforce of Wisdom, a powerful triangular artifact that when combined with the Triforce of Power and the Triforce of Courage, the controller of all three would be granted a single wish. Did I mention that all this backstory was written by Keiji Terui, who also worked on Dragon Ball? The villain, Ganon, possesses the Triforce of Power. As for the Triforce of Courage, it isn't really in this game. You'll have to play Zelda 2 to get that one. Once Link has assembled the entire Triforce, he can unlock the way to Ganon's hideout, Death Mountain, which certainly sounds epic. Do you know what doesn't sound epic? It's the Legend of Zelda and it's really rad. Those creatures from Ganon are pretty bad. Octorox Tech Tech's levers too. But with your help, our hero pulls through. Yeah, go Link, yeah, get some. Awesome. Intense. Even with that commercial, the game was a massive success, selling over 6.5 million copies making it the number 5 best-selling NES game of all time. But does the game hold up today? Honestly, the graphics are not as good as the very best on the system, and the dungeons all do look very similar. The sound, however, is composed by Koji Kondo, and is some of the best chiptune music ever created. Kondo wrote the classic overworld tune in a single day, when he found out the classical piece of music they were going to use was still under copyright. The gameplay is surprisingly deep for a game made in the early 80s, and the controls feel great. On IGN's Top 100 NES Games of All Time, they rated Legend of Zelda number 2. On the crowdsourced rating site Ranker.com, Zelda is also listed as the number 2 best NES game. On both lists, Super Mario Bros. 3 is the only game rated higher. Modern gamers can find The Legend of Zelda on the NES Classic Mini and the Switch's online service. You can also get it for the GameCube, Game Boy Advance, Wii, 3DS, and the Wii U, and those are only the official versions. I think I even know someone with a calculator that could play Zelda. If you're playing the game today, you'll have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. Key items are hidden in impossible to find locations, the dungeons are confusing mazes, and the clues provided by the in-game characters are cryptic to say the least. But what if I told you how to find every secret item? So you'll always be prepared for the next challenge? What if I told you how to find every hidden rupee location? So you'll have more than enough money to buy the items you need? And what if I told you how to manipulate the game's item drops? So you'll always have bombs when you need them? On today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Let's get started. Alright, The Legend of Zelda. We're going to start with a new account and it's dangerous to go alone, so we're going to go in this cave and get the wooden sword. Now, the most important thing here in the beginning of the game is that we can find some bombs, and bombs are dropped by enemies. It seems random, but if you do what I do here, don't kill any of these enemies, we can only get bombs to drop from certain enemy types, and it also depends on what order you kill the enemies in. So the first enemy we want to kill is a blue Octorok. So here in this room we find one, take him out, and look, drop the bombs already, so we're already in business. We're just hoping to find at least one bomb drop. 
But once you get those, come to this screen on the right and take out the four red Octoroks here because the first, sixth, and eighth enemy that you kill will give you a chance to drop a bomb. And so this will give us an 80% chance to start the game with bombs. Now, once you have bombs, let me talk about forced item drops really quick. If you can kill 10 enemies without getting hit, so just follow along with me here, you will get a blue rupee. That's your reward for doing it correctly. The game rewards you for hitting 10 enemies without taking a hit yourself by giving you a blue rupee. And we're going to see it right here on this screen. The next enemy I kill is number 10. So here we go. Bam, blue rupee, see? Now I'm gonna get hit just to illustrate the point. If we were to kill 10 enemies, but instead of hitting the 10th one with our sword, if we hit it with a bomb, instead that enemy will drop a bomb, no matter what enemy type it is as well. So we're gonna kill our enemies here. We wanna take out nine of them without getting hit. And then we're gonna kill the 10th enemy with a bomb. So that's nine. Now watch what happens when I kill this next enemy with a bomb. Boom, bombs. That will allow you to take any one bomb that you have and turn it into four. We're back to the game, and if you need to refill, right over here is a fairy fountain that you can use. Before we get into like level one, level two, and all that stuff, we have some business to attend to here in the overworld. If you weren't able to get bombs from those first three blue Octoroks, just reset your game and start over and try it again. You need to get at least one bomb drop to be able to do the next things that we need to do here. You have an 80% chance of getting them, so if you didn't get them the first time, you probably will the second. We're going to use a bomb in this room to find our first hidden cache of rupees. This one is for 30, and we're going to be able to hit up several of these so that we have a lot of money to buy the items we need here in the early game. Make your way over to the right, and if you don't understand exactly what happened with the bombs there, as you kill enemies, each enemy type has 10 possible item drops. So it'll either drop the item, or it'll drop nothing. The game just cycles through this 10 item table. So I'll include the item drop table on the enemy data for you to see. Make sure you have a bomb when you get to this room, because this is where we'll find our first heart container. Now the guy allows you to choose between the heart container and the water of life. Never choose the water of life. We're going to be able to buy that for just 68 rupees, and we can never buy heart containers. What's even more important, is we need to have five heart containers before the game will let us upgrade our sword. And that's why we're going to head over here and bomb the right side of this large rock formation. Once again, don't take the water of life. And we'll get our fifth heart container. Head out here. In the next room on the right, there is yet another secret hidden. We need to use bombs again. I'm going to try to take out these blue Octoroks just in case they might drop some bombs for us, but they didn't. Here we go, blow this up. And there's some more hidden rupees in here for us. All right, and once we get those rupees, we're going to head up here and take this ladder over in the next screen on the right. So up here on this ladder, go into this cave and we will find a letter that we can show to the old woman. And this letter is going to allow us to buy that water of life that we talked about before. Head down the ladder and there is yet another secret all the way over here on the right. And this is the top right corner of the map. So we can go through the wall here, right there. And we find a secret room with 100 rupees. Yeah, it's a secret to everybody. Now it's not a secret at all. We know there's 100 rupees in there, guy. 
All right, just head back down. And now we have a whole bunch of money. And it's time to get that sword upgrade. So make your way over to the left. And we're going to take this ladder up here. Continue to make your way through these tektites. These are very easy to kill. And they often drop money. So if you want to try to grab some extra money. Now let's stop up here in this store where we will be able to buy the blue candle. So we'll spend some of that money. The blue candle, very important item. We can use it to burn trees, which will allow us to find even more money. And whenever we're in certain rooms of the dungeons that are dark, we can use the candle to light it up. This room is called the Lost Hills, but we're just gonna pass through to the left here and take this ladder up to the top. This enemy here is a Lionel, and he's actually very dangerous. If you get hit by him, just use your invincibility frames to pass through. And here it is, the White Sword. With the White Sword, we will do double damage. This is a huge upgrade. We will be very happy to have it once we get into the actual dungeons. With the white sword in our possession, the next thing that we need to do is we're going to use that blue candle that we bought to burn some trees and uncover some more secrets. So we're going to head back to the more forested part of Hyrule. We're going to go around to the right and here's the first screen where we'll use that candle. The blue candle has a strange limitation. You can only use it once until you exit the screen that you're in. So if you miss the tree that you were trying to hit, you'll need to walk off the screen and come back and try it again. Once we get the red candle, that won't be a problem anymore. You can use the red candle as much as you want. Now that bridge to our left here would take us to level 1, but before we go there, we have a few more things that we want to pick up. So burn this tree up here with our candle, and we will get yet another cache of rupees. Grab those rupees and head out. We're going to go to the left here. On the next screen you want to count 5 trees in from the right. And that's the one you want to burn. Inside, we will find our sixth heart container. As usual, don't take the water of life. We're going to head over to the left. Now, on this screen, there's actually a hidden store, but we don't need to go in there right now. So we're going to make our way over to the more dead-looking forest area to the far left of the map. So we're going to come down here across this bridge. In the next room, we will find this is where those blue Octoroks were at the very beginning that we got the bombs from. And you'll remember that there is a fairy fountain nearby here if you need it. So try to kill some of these blue Octoroks. Got some more bombs. The blue Moblin is another enemy type that can also drop bombs. Now in this room, we can burn a tree and find a whopping 100 rupees. You can only hold 255 rupees at any one time. If you're worried about going way over, you don't have to grab that cache of rupees right now. You could save it for later. But we're going to go and spend 250 rupees right now. So you want to make sure that you have that much money. Make your way over to the right. Head all the way up here. And in the next room there's going to be some Armos statues. And we want to touch the middle one on the top row, which will cause it to move. And there's a hidden stairway underneath. And there it is. This is the blue ring. Now the blue ring is super awesome. Not only does it make us look this nice pastel blue color, but it reduces all the damage that we take by 
So we take half damage now, which is awesome. Now, I've actually been able to beat the game before with just the wooden sword and without any rings, but it's going to be great having these upgrades when we get started here. If you show this old woman the letter that we got, she allows us to buy medicine, which is the water of life. We don't have money for it right now, so we're just going to move on and head to our next objective. Head over here to the right and then make your way up. We're just going to kind of follow the path of this lake. And that's going to get us all the way back to level 1. If you remember where that was, it's right up here and across the bridge on this next screen. You don't have to do the levels in order, but level 1 is the easiest level, so yeah, we might as well do that one first. Grab that money and head into level 1. Now the first thing you want to do when you get in here is to head right back out. There's a locked door at the top of the screen that becomes unlocked whenever you exit and re-enter level 1. In this first room on the left, we'll encounter three bats, which are called keys, and they drop a key whenever you kill them all. In the room on the right, there is a skeleton monster called a Stophos that has a key inside of it, and we just want to kill him, grab the key, and head back out. Try to grab this fairy from, for no good reason. Now we're going to go up through the door that would have been locked, but we saved a key by not doing that. We don't have to kill any of these Staphos, there's nothing that we can gain by defeating them, but by killing all of these ones, we'll get a key. That's our third key. Now do we want to go right or left here? Actually, we want to use a bomb and go up. So use a bomb on the wall. In this room, we can pick up the map, it's not important. Pretty easy to figure out where to go in level 1. And head on up through the top door. We can kill another Stophos to get an extra key here, and we'll need to use one to go through the door up here. So we only have three keys remaining. We'll take out these Goria enemies to get another key. And what's nice about the keys in this game is they can be used in any dungeon that you want. Now hurry through this door so you don't get hit by those traps. And then you're going to kind of taunt those traps a little bit so that they move. And you'll be able to go down by pushing that block. And we'll find our first dungeon item, the bow. Unfortunately the bow doesn't do anything right now because we don't have any arrows. But the bow is very important. It's a mandatory item that we'll need to defeat a certain boss, and we'll also have to use it on Ganon himself. Make your way back the way that we came. We're going to go down one more room, and we're going to use a key to go through the door on the right. So head on into here. In this room, if we kill all the Gorias, we'll get a new weapon, the Boomerang. So we definitely want to do that. And there it is, we got the boomerang. The boomerang is pretty awesome. It can actually kill some of the weakest enemies in the game, like the keys or the gels. But usually we use it to stun enemies, like these wall masters. You want to grab that key, but if you get caught by a wall master, you'll end up back at the beginning of the level. This boss is very easy, just strike it right in the face a couple times. And we will be able to go through and grab our first piece of the Triforce. Level 1, pretty easy. Now before we go running off to level 2, we were able to get the bow when we were in level 1. So we're going to make a couple quick pit stops on the way over to level 2 so that we can get the arrows that we need to use it. Make your way down from level 1 through this room. Now these enemies are called pea hats. Those guys are pretty annoying because you can only damage them when they're not moving. 
pretty obnoxious enemy type. Alright, we're gonna use the candle in this room to pick up a big cache of rupees. One hundred of them. Make your way down. We're going to work our way all the way over to the right. These enemies are called leaders. The red ones often drop money and are very easy to kill with our white sword. Just make your way over to the right, taking out any enemies that get in your way. There are several stores in the game that can sell us the arrows that we need, but the one that we're going to come up on here is just conveniently located right near level 2. So here it is. The arrows always cost 80 rupees no matter which store you buy them from, but you notice the magical shield there? 130 is too much to pay for that. I can actually show you a store, and I will later in the video, where we can buy it for 90 rupees. Make your way over to the left. Before we hit level 2, I am going to stop one more time and grab some rupees. Go all the way up through this screen, and over to the right, and we're going to touch the right Arma statue here to open it up. And inside, we'll find 10 rupees. So if you don't feel like going to this one, I don't blame you, it's not a lot of money. Make your way back over to the left. We're going to cross one more screen to the left here, and this will take us on the path to level two. So head on in here, take out these Octoroks, assuming they're in your way and head up that ladder and this is level 2 level 2 is quite possibly easier than level 1 there are some aggressive enemies in here though I like to use the boomerang on these guys they are called ropes although it's pretty obvious that these guys are snakes whether you want to call them snakes or ropes doesn't matter to me but if you take them all out, you'll get a key. Head through the top room. In here, we don't need to kill all the ropes. We don't get anything for that. Just take out the ones that are in your way and make your way over to the left. We do need to kill all the ropes here if we want to open the door on the left. And in there, we'll be able to get a key. We do have a lot of keys at this point, so at some point, you don't have to get all of the keys that I pick up, but uh, you know, these early keys are very easy, so we might as well grab them when we can. Head back into this room and go back the way that we came. In this next room on the right, we want to go through the top. Now, you see a locked door on the right? We want to stay out of those locked doors on the right side here. There isn't anything that we need in them. And sometimes you kill an enemy that's like the master enemy and they all die, which is what happened with the Gorias there. You'll notice this room on the right is open, and if we kill all the ropes we'll get a key, but head through this open door, and this may be the most difficult room in level 2. We need to take out all three of these blue Gorias while trying to avoid the statues that are shooting at us. If we do, we'll get an upgrade for our boomerang, the Magical Boomerang. The Magical Boomerang is fairly similar to the original Boomerang, except that we can throw it clear across the screen, which is awesome. This guy's called a Moldorm. Just attack it and take out all the sections and we'll be able to get another key. And just keep making your way up. We can stay out of the right side for now. Take out all these ropes. I got the stopwatch so that's very handy and you'll get a blue rupee for taking those guys out and we have some gorias in this room which are very easy to take out if you get yet another stopwatch item so that's very lucky and in this room you always get a bomb and you're going to need it because we have to use it to fight this boss dodongo now there's two ways you can fight this guy 
you can drop a bomb in its path and it'll eat it. Or you could try to catch it with the explosion, which will freeze it in place, and then you can hit it with your sword. The feeding it bombs way takes two bombs to kill a Dodongo, and the Dodongo will not drop a bomb for you after you kill it. If you defeat it the other way, it only takes one bomb, and you get a set of four bombs when you do it. Now, that second way is a little bit harder, but if you can do it, it will allow you to conserve bombs a little bit better. But of course, we know exactly how to get bombs by using forced item drops, so it's not that critical. I kind of recommend just feeding the Dodongos two bombs whenever you see them. Up here we can grab 30 rupees by moving that Armos statue. And then we're going to make our way down. And kind of head back the way that we came. We have a couple things that we want to do before we hit level 3. We're going to get some more hidden rupees. And then we're going to spend those rupees to buy a shield upgrade. Grab your blue candle. And you may think we already burned a tree in this room. But nope, this one just looks exactly the same as another room that we burned a tree in. There are 10 hidden rupees here. So we're going to take those and make our way to the left. And we're just going to head to the left for the next few screens. So watch out for these Octa rocks. Keep going to the left. Avoid the pea hats. I pretty much never fight those. They're much easier to just avoid. Keep heading to the left. And in the next room there is a tree that we want to burn. So we're going to burn the lower left tree in the 6 formation here. And inside we'll find 10 more rupees. We're going to take those rupees and head to the screen above us where we will be able to burn the tree on the corner and there is a hidden storefront inside. This store will sell us the magical shield for only 90 rupees instead of 130, which it sold for in other locations. Now that we have the magical shield, we'll have a wider area to block projectiles, and we'll also be able to block things that we were unable to block before, like there's these enemies in level 6 called Wiz Robes, which you just can't block with the standard shield. There is one problem though. There's an enemy type called Like Likes, and if those guys catch you, they will eat your shield and you'll lose it. So I'll point those out whenever I see them, but it's going to give us a nice advantage here in level 3. This is the infamous swastika shaped level, and in this room we can grab a key while avoiding these Zol enemies. The Zols, if you only had the wooden sword, would split into two smaller enemies one hit, but with the white sword, they simply take one hit to defeat. Very easy. Avoid the enemies in this room and head to the left. In here, we're going to need to kind of taunt the traps on the left side so that we can get through the key door without getting hit. First, I'm going to take out the keys with my boomerang and then push through here. Now in this room, we have to defeat a lot of enemies called Dark Nuts. The Dark Nuts are very difficult because you can't damage them from the front, so you need to hit them from the side or on top. Now there is a good trick to defeating them, and that's to hang out in the middle of the room, which will lure them to you, and then we can use bombs. If you're in the center of the room, the Dark Nuts are very aggressive, so they want to come find you there. And once they're all defeated, we'll be able to go into this room, where I would just try to avoid these Dark Nuts and go down the stairs where you'll find the Raft. The Raft is a mandatory item that we'll need to be able to unlock level 4. And once you get it, you're going to head back up and out the way that we came. Make your way back up and then head to the right. Hopefully you didn't use up all of your bombs fighting those Dark Nuts. We are going to need one pretty soon. Watch out for these traps and make your way to the next room on the right. 
Now, in this room, if you are short on bombs, you can kill the Dark Knights here and they will drop some for you. But we need to go through the wall on the right. So I'm going to fight these guys, but you only need to do it if you want to pick up some bombs. Take out the last two. And it did drop bombs, I was just standing right on top of them when they dropped. Head over here on the right, we do need to fight all the Dark Nuts in this room, so that the door on the right will open. Take out this guy. Make your way to the right. And we'll have a much easier set of enemies in here. But we do need to fight them in order to open up the door again. So I got my boomerang out to take out the keys. And these bubble enemies will make you unable to use your sword for a few seconds. So that's a good reason to also have the boomerang out. In case you need to stun something while you wait for your sword to come back online. And in this next room, make sure your bombs are equipped because this is the boss. You ideally want to plant a bomb that explodes right in the center of this thing. But if you don't get it completely with the first bomb, just try to hit it with another one or two and you should be able to easily finish off Manhandala and grab the third piece of the Triforce. Now, before we head on to level 4, there are some optional items that I want to grab. The key one being the Power Bracelet, which will allow us to teleport around to different locations in Hyrule. Of course, before we do that, there are still some hidden rupees for us to find. So we'll want to use a bomb in this room to open up a cave where we can find some loot. Grab those 30 rupees and head on back out. And we're going to go up here. This room is the Lost Woods. If you head to the right in that room, you can leave. But if you go through any other direction, that screen will continue to repeat. So, we'll talk about how to deal with the Lost Woods here in a second. But first, we're going to use our candle in this room. Open up this tree. And we can grab a few more rupees right here. Putting us up to 110 right now, not doing too bad. Now, in this room, the Lost Woods, we, you gotta go up, then left, then down and then left again. So, up, left, down, left. And if you do that, you'll hear a tone, and you'll find yourself on the other side. These enemies are dangerous. These guys are called Lynels. I'm not gonna try to mess with them too much, especially the blue variety. And we'll head our way up here into the graveyard. Make your way over to the right. Try to avoid touching any of these tombstones, that will summon some ghosts. Although that is a good place for you to get money, if you need money. We will probably have to come back here later in the game, depending on how well we do picking up money in the dungeons. I'm going to bomb this wall here, inside there is a hidden potion shop. And I'm going to grab the red water of life. The blue one's not a very good deal. You can use the red one twice if you need it, and it will refill all of your hearts. The first time you use it, it turns into the blue potion, but the second time, it's gone. Now, if you touch this Armos, we'll be able to grab a power bracelet, and that's the item I was talking about before that's going to open some secret passageways for us. Over here on the right, we can bomb into another cave, and find some more rupees. One interesting thing about the potions in this game, if you have the blue potion, and you go to the potion shop and you buy another blue potion, it will turn into the red potion. So that is a good time to buy the blue potion if you've already used one use of your red and you just want to recharge it. Once you have the rupees and the power bracelet, we're gonna head back the way that we came. We'll dip down this ladder and up the ladder on the other side and this is where we'll find our first secret passage 
which will be able to push this block, and we couldn't do that before without the power bracelet. This connects to three other locations, so we want to take the ladder on the right, come down here, and take out any of these enemies that are in your way. We're clear on the right side of Hyrule now, before we were all the way on the left. So we'll be able to use these passages to kind of conveniently move through. Here is a little dock and we can use our raft here. And inside this is not level 4. Nope. We can grab another heart container here. Certainly don't take the water of life. Come on man. Alright, head back down. And we're going to go back the way that we came. Head back up here, over to the left. We're going to climb this ladder. We're going to go back into the secret passage, and we're going to take a different stairway this time. If you take the wrong stairway, just go back in and take another one. We want to come out on this side, which conveniently is located right next to another fairy fountain, so if you ever need a fairy fountain and can get to one of the power bracelet locations, you can easily access this fairy fountain, so that's a good place to know about. Head over to the left here, and this is going to take us back near to where the game first started. On the next screen, there's going to be a dock, which we can cross with our raft. And this is level 4. Level 4 is a good bit larger than the previous ones that we've encountered. Over here on the left, we can take out some keys, and if we do, we will earn another key. Right now we have 7 keys, which seems like a lot. But we can hold more than 9 keys for the record. You can get into 10, 11. I've never held too many keys before. Come on up here. This enemy is called a buyer. And whenever you hit it with your sword, it splits into two keys, which is pretty annoying. You're going to want to have your boomerang equipped for level 4. A lot of keys to kill in here. Alright, more of those buyers. And this is our first encounter with a darkness room. We want to use our blue candle so that we can see the floor plan. And that'll make it a little bit easier to maneuver through here. Head up and use the candle again. You don't want to hit the Zol enemies with the candle fire because that may cause them to split. And if we just hit them with the sword, that'll be a lot easier. Another dark room. Light it up. We can't cross this water yet, so we need to use one of our 10 keys to go through the door here on the right. And we're going to just take these guys out, which will open that shutter door on the right side. And I'm going to use my boomerang so I can take out the keys that they split into much more easily. Well, why do they call bats keys in this? What a silly name for a bat. There's bats in every game, just call them bats. Now this annoying layer cake looking monster is called a like like, and this guy is very dangerous. If he hits you, we'll lose our magical shield permanently. So I'm going to use my boomerang to stun him, and I'm going to intermittently just throw that boomerang on him. I'm not messing around with like likes. We'll push a brick here. And in the bottom of the stairs, we will find the stepladder. The stepladder is a mandatory item that will allow Link to step over water that is one space wide. We'll see how it works in this room right here. Just walk right across the water. Now, we don't need to go in the room above us here. Just head over to the left. We can light this room up if we want to. Uh, but this is the one that had the water in it before, but we can cross it now. We'll go up here. Take out some of these enemies in your way. 
Now, we don't actually have to defeat this boss. This is a mini boss and you don't earn a heart container for killing it, you just get a bomb. But we want to bomb through the right wall. If you feel like killing that guy, go for it, but you want to bomb through the right wall and we'll find some money in here. And if we bomb through the top, there's a very easy to grab key up here, so we might as well take this opportunity to get it. It's just kind of sitting right out there in the open. Just a couple of keys surrounding it. Come down here, we're going to use a bomb again on the right wall. Make sure you have enough bombs for this. If you have to kill some enemies outside and try to get 10 without getting hit so that you can get that bomb drop by killing the 10th enemy with a bomb, that could be worth doing. We need to take out all the enemies in this room so that we can open the door on the right. We'll push this block once the enemies are defeated. And in here we'll reach the boss. This is Gleok. This Gleok only has two heads, so we just want to stay on the side and try to attack him. Standing in front of Gleok, you'll end up taking a lot more damage. So just kind of aggressively attack the heads from the side and you should be able to defeat him, no problem. And there it is, that's our fourth piece of the Triforce. We are halfway there. So I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is the first four levels were pretty easy compared to the next ones that are coming up. The good news is that right now we have 11 heart containers and to get the best sword in the game, we need 12 hard containers, so we only need one more. The even better news is that with the stepladder we found in level 4, we're going to be able to use that to get the 12th hard container, and we're going to be able to go and get the magical sword before we have to do any of the next dungeons, so we will have the best weapon in the game, ready on our side to fight through those more difficult dungeons. Head down here. This is the room where level 8 is. And remember that. You will have to come back here later. And just make your way all the way to the coast. This is where we're going to find that heart container. Come up here. And there it is, just waiting for us to pick up. Across the water with the stepladder. And there you have it, 12 heart containers. We need to go and find that magical sword. We're going to head up here and we're going to use one of our power bracelet secret passages. Make your way over here and we're going to go up this ladder. Right up here you'll see the stairs. So just jump on in there. Take any road you want. This time we want the far left. This takes us right over near the graveyard. And the graveyard is where we're going to find the magical sword. We head over here to the left. Be careful with these Lionel guys. They have shooting sword attacks just like you do. So you might want to use your boomerang to stun them. We want to push this gravestone right here. And that's it. The magical sword is ours. Now that we are fully powered up, if you want to use these ghost enemies, which are called genies, to get a whole bunch of extra money, this could be a good time to do it. You want to hit them three times to kill the ghost, if you hit it twice and then start making ghosts from a tombstone, you'll want to try to freeze the original ghost in place with your boomerang as you make the extra ghosts, because only that original one can actually be killed. You'll try to get as many ghosts on the screen as you can, and then kill the master ghost, and they'll all die simultaneously, leaving behind a whole bunch of loot. And whenever you're ready, we can head on up to level 6. Now wait, you said what about level 5? 
Well, I actually think that level 6 is easier than level 5, and there's no rule that says we have to do them in order. Watch this, just stand in the doorway for a second and let those whiz robes appear, then step out of the doorway and you'll hit them all in a row. The way that those guys work, they want to line up on an axis that faces Link, so if you're hanging out in the doorway, there's only one axis they can line up on. You'll need to take out the keys in this room to be able to open the door. I like to use the boomerang for this. And you'll also get a key, which we have nine of now. Watch out, there's some traps in the middle of the room this time. Make your way up through the top. And we're gonna have to face whiz robes and like likes in this room. It's important that we prioritize taking out the like likes because we definitely don't want to lose our magical shield. That shield will actually allow us to shield the attacks that the whiz robes use against us. The way I like to prioritize the enemies in this room are the like likes are the highest priority to kill, then the red whiz robes which disappear, and the blue whiz robes which don't disappear are the easiest enemies to avoid. In this room, all we actually need to do is bomb the wall here on the right. We do not need to take out all of the enemies. Now we have another one of those darkness rooms in here. I'm going to turn on my blue candle and light it up. Now there's a key just waiting for me in the middle of the room. I'm going to grab that. We don't need to take out all the enemies here. This room has like likes again. I want to cross the water. The like likes can't cross the water, so I'm safe on the right side of it. We need to take out all the enemies in this room, so I like to try to take out the red whiz robes when I have a good opportunity to. They're easy to take out with just one hit of the magical sword. And you'll notice I got a fairy. Every 16 enemies you kill, you should get a fairy. That can even overwrite the forced item drops, so if you ever get a fairy when it seems like you should get something else, that's why. Down here we found the wand. The wand is definitely an optional item. You don't need it at all, but it is useful against certain enemies. So of course we're going to get it. One of the enemies it's very good against are the like likes. It's very nice to be able to attack them from range. In this room, we can hang out in a doorway again if you want to attack those whiz robes in a line, but I just wanted to get that key. We're going to head down here. Grab our candle so that we can see. And we want to go down through the bottom here. We're going to need to light this room again. I already have the candle on. We need to take out all of the enemies here to open the doors. Well, luckily we got the stopwatch. And head to the right. Once again, we're faced with whiz robes and like likes. We do have the wand now, though. You can use the boomerang. I like stunning the like likes. But uh, the wand is also a possible option that you could use here now that we have it. So either way, you want to make sure that you have something that you can do if you get hit by that bubble, which makes you unable to use the sword, but it won't stop you from using the wand. See, the wand very handy against the like likes. You can use it or the boomerang, whichever you feel more comfortable with. There's a secret passage, so cut on through here. Don't take any unnecessary damage from these keys. This puts us out in a room with some dangerous like likes in it. Do not be caught off guard by them. And head down. We want to light this room up. Blue candle. Oh good, we got some bombs, that's gonna help. Take out this guy. We are very close to the boss here. In this room, we're going to head up. 
be careful with trying to get through that key door. And here's the boss. We're gonna use an arrow when the eye is open. That guy's called Goma. Yeah, and he's kind of a joke. Very, very easy. Although, to be fair, we had to do a lot of work to be able to have the bow and the arrows. So we had to find the bow in level 1. We had to find 80 rupees. We had to get a store that sold arrows. If we didn't have the bow, we can't actually kill Goma. So that was just the challenge. It was, do you or do you not have the bow? Now, I didn't forget about level 5. We still have to do it, so we're going to come up here and enter this secret passage with our power bracelet and take the road to the right. This will take us right out near level 5. This area that we're coming up on is called the Lost Hills. You can leave this room to the left, but if you go in any other direction, it'll just keep repeating itself. The trick here is to just keep going up. Just go up, 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 and eventually, we will reveal level 5. Now, you'll want to make sure you have as many bombs as you can bring to level 5. Come up here in this room, and we can use a candle to light it up. These enemies that look like mummies are called Gibdos. Gibdos are one of the enemy types that can drop bombs. So if you need to farm bombs from enemies, these Gibdos could be a good way to get some. Head over here through the wall to the left by using a bomb, and there's a Gibdo here we can kill to get a bomb drop without even, you know, having a random item drop. In this room, we must defeat five blue dark nuts. Blue Dark Nuts are even harder than the red ones that we had faced previously in level 3. You still can't hit them from the front. This room is very constricting, so you use bombs if you need to, but you want to try to conserve them as much as you can. Once they're all clear, push this block on the left and take this secret passage away. On the other side of the secret passageway, if you thought we could get off easily, you were way wrong. Six blue dark nuts in this room. Oh man, this room is intense. It's laid out a little bit better than the previous one, and if you move to the center of the room, the dark nuts will follow there. So you can try to get them to move to the middle, and then hit them with a bomb, or catch them with your sword but they will predictably move to the middle, and that's an important thing to know about them. Once they're all defeated, press the block, and we will be able to get the Recorder. The Recorder is a very important item. First of all, we're going to need to use it to defeat the boss of level 5, and we're also going to need to use it to open up level 7, but that's not all it actually does. You can use the recorder to actually transport you around the overworld. And that's something that we'll want to do after we get out of here. Head through this wall, and if you have a hundred rupees, you can buy the ability to have more bombs. I highly recommend it. It will also fill you up to that 12 maximum. Very, very nice. It's very good to have, especially after using a lot of bombs, to fight those blue dark nuts. Head back down the secret passage, back the way we came. Up here, we just want to try to avoid the dark nuts now and get back through the hole that we created. Make our way back through the hole on the right side again. Here's another one of those dark rooms. So, we'll use our blue candle. We need to take out both Gibdos here to open the door at the top. In this room, there's three Dodongos. Just avoid those guys. We don't want to waste all our bombs fighting Dodongos. In here, we can just take out these Zools. We don't have to, but I got the stopwatch, so I might as well try to get some extra rupees. And you do get a blue rupee for defeating them all. Alright, make your way up here. 
you don't have to fight those Gibdos. Light this room up with your candle. It's like red dark nuts. We just fought a whole bunch of blue ones. These guys are nothing. And there's a key in this room, which we can use to open the door over on the left side. These rabbit head enemies are called Pole's Voice, and they take a lot of hits from our sword to kill. But they have a weakness, which is the arrows. So watch this, there's going to be a whole bunch of them in the next room. We'll use the bow to take them out easily. Here we go. Just one shots these Pole's Voice. You want to take them out, that's how you do it. Use arrows. Now I have a special way of beating this boss. We want to put a bomb on top of him. And then we're going to use the recorder immediately. And as soon as we're done, it'll catch him with the bomb. And you need to hit him one time with your sword as well. So that is the pro speedrun strategy for defeating Dig Dogger. It's not that hard to pull off, so I recommend trying it. You just plant a bomb on him, and then immediately use the recorder. Now we're actually going to use the recorder to warp to another place in the overworld. And depending on which direction you're facing, and how many times you blow it, you can see I wanted to go to level 4, so I dialed that in. You can actually deterministically decide which completed level that you get warped to. So the recorder will warp you to any level that you have already finished. And I wanted to come to level 4, so if you play it and you don't end up at level 4, just play it again until you do. So take a couple tornadoes. We need to get back to this store because we need to buy enemy bait. The enemy bait costs 60, and you can use it to lure monsters to a certain point on the screen, but that's not what's important about it. We won't be able to finish level 7 unless we bring the enemy bait with us. Once we have that enemy bait, just make our way down here and then go to the left on this screen. Remember, if you need it, there's a fairy fountain right above us here. We'll hit that if you need to refill your health, but we're going to go left here. And we're going to go up one screen and we'll find an abandoned fairy fountain. Very weird looking, but if we play the recorder here, it opens a secret path. Within lies level 7. Level 7 has a lot of rooms, so if you don't want to get lost, the key is to just keep heading straight up, including in this room here. Put a bomb on the upper wall and head on up through. You don't have to kill any of those enemies. Head up again, just passing by. And in this room, you'll need to take out these enemies. I like to use the wand here because of the bubbles, which can make you unable to use your sword. You can easily defeat these Gorias with the wand if your sword is deactivated. We head up again. Now in this room we actually have to go to the left. We don't have to kill this boss here, but we're going to use that pro speedrun strategy again. Just because it's easy, so we did the bomb and then we hit him with the recorder. There was two this time, so the bomb actually hit both of them. And you do need to strike each one one time with the sword if you get the bomb off. Well, anytime you see a dig dogger, that's how you beat him. It's slow moving at first, so it's very easy to plant the bomb on him. In this room, we're going to go up through the key door. It's in this next room that we need to use that monster bait. I definitely wanted to collect the money here. I'm going to need a hundred rupees to be able to get another bomb upgrade in this level. And I don't know if I'm going to have it by the time I get to the end here, so we may need to go farm money in the graveyard. We found the map. You can see how many rooms there are. Now, once you get up here, 
You can keep going up again into this empty space, but there's just some money hidden up here. So, nice little trick. Head over to the right. We want to make our way to, like, the eye in the map. So there's that one black space in the middle. That's where we need to head to. There's a hidden item there, the red candle. We need to kill all the Gorias in this room, which will give us some more money. Maybe I will have the hundred, we'll see. Head down. And take these guys out. We'll just want to go through the wall on the right. And that is that eye room that I was talking about. And in here we do need to finish off all the enemies. These ones... Oh, I got the stopwatch again. Awesome. So take out these enemies, and then we're going to push the block over on the left side. Down in here is where the red candle is. Here is the sneaky thing about level 7. So you figure all this stuff out, and you think, alright, so the boss has got to be one of the other ways that I didn't go in this level, but no. You actually need to bomb through the wall on the right here. Very sneaky. There are a lot of blue Gorias in here. We just need to go through the door to the right and use a key. Down to five keys now, but that should be plenty. And this time we do have to fight the Dig Dogger, so put the bomb on him. Got the recorder out. And we'll use that bomb recorder strategy. This time he split into three parts, but I only need to hit each one once because they were already hit by the bomb. Make your way up here. Three Dodongos. You do not need to fight these guys. Just blow up the wall on the right and conserve your bombs. In this room, here's another very sneaky one. I like to use the wand because of the bubbles here. You need to take out these wall masters which you might not even know were there if you didn't kind of move towards the wall. You definitely don't want to get grabbed by a wall master. It'll take you back to the beginning of level 7. Once you've killed them all, you can push that block on the side and go down into this secret passageway. Head up. Very, very tricky level, level 7. We've made it to this room. We are very close to the boss now. And what do you think we need to do here? That's right, we need to bomb our way out. Over here to the right. There we are. And the boss is a Aquamentus. So, he's actually weak to arrows, but it's so easy to just take him out with the magical sword that it's just like, why even bother? We'll grab that Triforce. And that's it. Kind of an anticlimactic end to level 7, which is one of the harder levels in the game. Now, I didn't get that bomb upgrade, so I'm going to just speed this up a little bit, and we're going to head over to the graveyard so that I can get the 100 rupees that I need to be able to grab that upgrade. I said I was getting everything in the game, and we're getting everything in the game. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use our boomerang and the magical sword. So I want to hit this Ginny, the ghost, two times with the sword. And then just keep freezing it with the boomerang so we don't lose track of which one is the master ghost. You can't damage any of the other ones. Whenever you can't make any more ghosts come out of the tombstone, we hit them one more time and then we just clean up the loot. We'll go to another space. I'm going to speed it up again and just do the same thing. Each time that we do it, we at least are going to get one blue rupee, but we always get a little bit more than that. So see how lucky we are. All right, got two blue rupees that time. Very good value. And it's just a very fast way to make money in this game. A lot of money that time. And we're just gonna, I'm just gonna do it one time. I figure that if I take out all the enemies on the way back to level seven, I should be very close to the hundred that I need by the time I get there and I can just grab the last couple rupees in the level. So yeah, 86, that's pretty good. 
I didn't have very many when I started, and you can also just, if you want to hop into level 6, that's another good way to reset the monsters, and just keep racking up as much money as you need. So if you need to buy like Water of Life or something like that, that's a good way of doing it. And so we're back here in level 7. We're going to take a slightly different path this time. I'm just killing enemies here because I have 93 rupees and I do need 100. Alright, that's good, 94. We want to bomb our way through this wall here on the left. And head into this room. Now, there are some rope snakes down here, which these guys have a very good item chart for money drops. And there's also a free key here, so I might as well grab that while we're down in this room. And there we go, we have 100. So that's an optional room for sure, but if you want to grab an extra key, it's there. Head up here. Now skip these Dodongos. Although, if you want to fight them, we are about to get this bomb upgrade. You're going to get your bombs refilled anyway. And that's it. 100 rupees, and now we can hold 16 bombs. Pretty sweet. That should be plenty of bombs to help us get through the final two levels. And just make your way out of level 7. And we just have one more piece of the Triforce to collect. So I want to use the recorder to warp to level 2. But we can't play it on this screen because there's no tornadoes here, it just opens up level 7. So I'm going to face downward and play it twice, because the last level that the recorder took us to was level 4. So if I face down and play two times, 4 minus 2 is 2, and it will take us here to level 2. Now if you play the recorder, you don't end up at level 2. Just keep tornadoing until you get there. Make your way to the right, then head down, and you may remember where level 8 is located. We've walked by it several times now. There it is. We can use our red candle, which the only difference between the red candle and the blue one is you can use the red candle as many times as you want on the same screen, so it's not a big upgrade. But here we are, we're in level 8, and level 8 is not that difficult of a labyrinth to figure out, but it is a combat challenge, so this one is more like a gauntlet. If you head all the way to the left whenever you enter level 8, you will encounter this room, where you'll need to defeat some Dark Nuts and Gibdos while dealing with those bubble enemies, that annoyingly will turn off your sword. Equip the wand here, so that if you do get hit by the bubbles, at least you'll still be able to fight back against the Gibdos, and definitely prioritize taking out the Dark Nuts first. Once they're all defeated, push the block on the left, and we will be able to get an optional upgrade for our wand, the Magic Book, or the Book of Magic, whatever you want to call it, Whenever the wand hits after you have the magic book, it will emit some flames. The flames actually do less damage than the wand beam themselves. They do light up a room, so that's kind of nice. Is it a good upgrade for the wand? I don't know. It certainly feels unnecessary, but I said I was getting all the items, so we are getting all of the items. In this room, there's a manhandler but we don't want to deal with him right now. Just go to the ceiling and bomb the top wall. Moving forward into this room, we will have to deal with these enemies. There are five blue dark nuts here, and these statues are viciously attacking you the entire time. Remember that if you move towards the middle of the room, the dark nuts will be attracted to you there, and you can get them with a bomb or your sword whenever that's happening. Once they're all defeated, make your way up through this room, and in here, it looks like we have to fight six Dark Nuts, but no. We're just going to bomb our way through. In this room, another Manhandler, which we can skip by just going through the door at the top. 
Now we have to fight a blue Goma in here. And if you remember how easy Goma was before, not the blue Goma. We need to hit this one three times. And there's a whole bunch of these statues that are shooting at us. I like to call this Goma's Revenge. He is not a joke like he was the first time. Once you hit him three times, get into this room where we'll need to defeat some Dark Nuts and Pole's Voice this time. Remember that you can use your bow to defeat the Pole's Voice easily, but they do cost rupees to use, and I am getting very low on rupees right now, so I need to be careful with how many shots of my bow I can actually use. Luckily, the stopwatch appeared again, so we're able to easily take out these enemies. I may have to hit that one dark nut with a bomb, which will be easy enough to do. Just do that. And once again, as usual, we're pushing the block on the left side, and down here, we find the magic key. The magic key means that we don't have to worry about picking up keys anymore. We now have a number of keys, which essentially means infinite. Well, the magical key is not a mandatory item to get, but it will make the game a whole lot simpler. In this room, we will bomb through the left wall this time, and in here we'll be able to grab some extra money. Just some extra rupees for you to find. Nothing really more to see here. Once we've grabbed those, we're gonna head back down. This time, we need to defeat these Dark Nuts so that we can open the door. Did I say we weren't gonna have to fight them? Yeah, I guess I lied about that. We have to fight them now. Remember, they want to move towards you if you go to the center of the room. Take them all out, and make your way to the right. Try to avoid the enemies here, we just want to get into the stairway. Once we get in there, we're going to take the secret passage down through the bottom to the left. In this room, a whole bunch of Poles voice attack us. We definitely don't need that key anymore. And we don't actually have to kill all the Poles voice. It looks like we need to go through that door to the left, but actually, we want to bomb up through the top wall. And here is the boss, the Four-Headed Gliok. The Four-Headed Gliok is much crazier than the Two-Headed one we fought earlier, so this time, whenever one of the heads is removed, I'm going to try to hit it with a bomb. You can't hit the main Gliok with a bomb, but you can hit the disembodied heads. So that's a good way to get extra hits in on this guy and finish him off very, very quickly. And that's it. We have assembled the entire Triforce of Wisdom. It's time to go on to Death Mountain and finally face our destiny to defeat Ganon. I'm going to use the recorder once again. This time I'm going to have to blow it a bunch of times. We're going to be whisked off to level 6. And level 6 happens to be very close to Death Mountain. Make your way to the right. Over here there is a potion shop. Remember if you need to grab potions, this is going to be your last chance to buy the Water of Life before we have to go to the final level. Make your way up this ladder and head over to the right. We remember this room from before where the power bracelet was. Continue over to the right. Avoid these P-hat enemies. Come up here. We need to go over to the right a few more screens and then we'll be able to go up and back to the left. So that's what we're going to do here. So go up the ladder. And then we're going to start making our way over to the left. And we're looking for a rock formation called the Spectacle Rock. That is where Death Mountain is. And here it is. So we need to use a bomb. And we're going to bomb the left side. 
a lot of enemies outside of here. You can tell that this is where Ganon's hideout truly is. Once we get inside of level 9, in this room, if we didn't have the Triforce of Wisdom, we would not be able to move forward, but we do have it, so head up to the next room above. Watch out for the like legs here, and we're going to bomb through the wall on the left. There are a lot of mini-bosses here in level 9, and this is the first one we'll face, the Red Land Molas. They are weak to the wand, so we're going to use that and light them up. Once they're defeated, we can push the block on the left and enter our first secret passageway. It most certainly will not be the last one. Don't get lost here in level 9, just follow along and you'll be perfectly safe. Shoot these like likes with your wand. You don't need to take out all the enemies in this room, but the like likes are very dangerous. I don't want them to take away my magical shield, so I'm going to fight them through the blocks where they can't hurt me. Come down here. What we need to actually do is go through the door on the right, so that's the plan. Take out that like like and hit the door on the right. Since we have the magic book, we can light up the room with our wand. Very convenient. In this room, this enemy is called a Patra, and if we kill it, it'll drop bombs. But right now I have just enough bombs for what I want to do, so I'm not going to worry about it just yet. I'm going to blow up this wall on the right, and I need to wait for this Patra to stop throwing its mini Patras around so that I can bomb the top wall. Then we need to bomb yet again in this room. Watch out for those like likes though. Alright, very dangerous. Head up into this room. We need to take out all the whiz robes here. Be careful of the bubbles though, they can certainly make life a lot more challenging in this room. Once you defeat all the whiz robes, we'll be able to open the secret passage and get the Red Ring. The red ring is optional, but it makes you take 75% less damage. So we only take one fourth the damage we would take without it. That is crazy. Having the red ring makes everything so much easier. Now that we have it, I'm going to go and fight that Petra enemy that has the bombs because having zero bombs is certainly a problem right now. It's nice that I got the stopwatch though, so that I don't have to worry about these like likes. I really need to just kill some more enemies so that I can hopefully get a fairy soon. Remember the game will drop a fairy every 16 enemies killed, although those gels never drop items, so I don't really want to worry about killing them right now. So here's that Patra, I just wait for it to stop moving too much and take out the small ones. You need to take out the small ones first before you can take out the one in the center. And we're going to use my infinite key to go up into this room. We need to bomb again over to the left. So head on over to the left. Now if I get much lower on health, I'm going to have to use my water of life. Luckily, I have two uses of that. Hopefully it won't come to it. Maybe I'll find some hearts or a fairy. There we go. There we go. There's the fairy. And push that block and head down the stairs that appear. Take the secret passage to the left. There is one more important item that we need to get, and that is the silver arrows. We will not be able to finish off Ganon without them. So we need to take this door down, and we're going to take the door to the right. You can see why we wanted the infinite keys. We'd had to bring a lot of keys with us. This is the blue land molas. These ones are faster, but they are just as weak to the wand. Head on down the stairs, take the secret passage to the left. When you head up out of the passage, we're just going to go through the door in the top here. 
Then this room, we need to fight a Patra again. This one has a little bit different pattern. It's easier to deal with. It doesn't get as wide as the other Patra was kind of spreading its smaller kids, I guess, out wider. This one you can just kind of get relatively close to and just keep hitting it with the sword. And that's it. Push this block and head down into another secret passage. When you emerge from this one, make sure you get your bombs out. We need to bomb through the top wall here. So bomb our way out. If you want to kill any of the whiz robes right now, we will need to take them out later, so you might as well kill a couple while you can. In this room, we need to defeat all of the whiz robes. And if you're not as lucky as I am to get the stopwatch, you're going to need to be extra cautious of those bubbles. As long as you have the magical shield, the whiz robes are not that difficult to deal with. Push that block and head down into the secret passage where we will find those silver arrows. Now you have the silver arrows for such a short amount of time in the game that it's easy to forget that they actually do deal more damage to standard enemies than the wooden arrows do. Once you get back into this room, you'll need to take out any whiz robes that remain so that we can push the block on the left side of the formation and head down into the secret passage that we came from. We are very close to Ganon now, so we just need to make our way back the way that we came, and this time we're going to be in the room where that Petra was. Head up through the door and watch out for like likes. We're going to use our wand here to take them out. The fire is actually kind of nice here because it gives you a little bit of a buffer between you and the like likes when they get very close like that. If they get too close though, definitely attack with the sword because it does deal more damage. Once they're all defeated, we can head through the door on the left. This next room is dark, so conveniently my wand will light the room up. And we don't actually have to kill the Zoles here, although I'm kind of hoping to maybe get some extra hearts. And we just want to go through the door in the top. So head up. In this room, we don't have to take out these whiz robes, just go straight up. But we do need to fight the whiz robes here. Be careful of those traps as you enter the room. Once all the whiz robes are defeated, we can push the block on the left and that will open up a secret passage. Take that passage down and to the right. Annoying to get hit by some keys when we're getting this close to the end. In this room we want to bomb our way to the left, so make your way to the left and hit a bomb on that side. Bam. And get out of that room. That's a dangerous one. But we do need to fight all the enemies in this room and very annoyingly, they put like-likes in this room right before Ganon. We're like very, very close to the end, and they're making it possible that we could lose our magical shield now of all times. So I'm prioritizing taking out the like-likes from a distance where they can't hurt me. Don't want to mess this up now. We're too deep into the game. Push that block and head on down. In the next room, we're going to have to fight one more Patra. So get ready for that. It is the angled variety, so a nice easy one for us. Just keep it at a distance. And hit it until all the small ones are defeated. And then we can get in there and take out the Patra. And this is it. The final battle with Ganon. No, your Nintendo is not broken. The final boss is invisible. Watch for where he's shooting you from and try to stab wildly in that direction. Whenever you hit him, he'll disappear and reappear in either the lower left or the lower right corner. So use that information to your advantage. And once he turns red like that, that means you got him. It's time to shoot him with the silver arrows. He'll explode. We'll grab his Triforce of Power, 
which will open the door to Princess Zelda. Attack the flames and stand beside her to finally complete your quest. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Well, I hope this video enabled you to finally defeat Ganon and become the hero of Hyrule. If it did, make sure to give it a like and be sure to subscribe for more videos. Because there will always be more princesses to rescue. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.